G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here and welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday where every Tuesday or we get together we look at some new, different or just exciting technology in the FPV drone racing world and today, well, I thought it might be kind of interesting for you guys out there who are brand new in the hobby or only just recently joined it, we're going to be sort of stepping back in time and checking out the sort of gear that I started with. So we're going to be looking at my drone, the first frame I used with the original components we're sticking on the bench and I'm going to be showing you just how lucky you guys are nowadays and how far we've come. I mean like a 12 amp ESC. You should see the size of the OSD that you had to put in here. Very, very crazy stuff compared to today's super slick, very, very fast drone. So what we're going to be doing, we're sticking this 3S bad boy on the bench and sort of giving it a squeeze and sort of having a discussion and I guess a look back in time at what technology used to be two or three years ago. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, here it is on the bench, and we've got most of the components in here, but these are the components I first started with, but this was my first frame. This is the Emax Nighthawk. I never reviewed this, but it has a big place in my heart, but check out, look, look at how bendy this sort of thing is. It's a one and a half mil plate in there, so that's what the base plate sort of used to be. There was no real, real you put your little Mobius on the top here. Look at, it was very difficult to mount everything, I guess, especially when you tried to put a VTX of this size in here. And check out the arms, like they were just bolted on with two little flat pieces that they sort of stopped right there and that's ultimately what happened I broke a few arms on this and look at all the silly cutouts and all that sort of stuff so just crazy looking at how far we've come and I think they were trying to save weight as well and the clearance on here this was sort of before we worried about making them as small as we can they sort of had a very big profile this could almost fit I guess five and a half inch props I mean check that out anyway we'll put this to the side and what we should do let's talk about this bad boy right here now this is actually one of the first things I ever reviewed this is the ZMR and you can go watch this review up here and uh, this was sort of like a blackout clone and this was sort of a, a really really popular frame that got a lot of people into the hobby and at the time I absolutely loved it. It's kind of funny to look back now. I think I had like 40 subs, maybe 20 subs or something like that when I did this review. But anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take the top off because it's not even screwed in and you can see things look very different. Now what we have on the front, this is actually our FPV camera and check it out, it's a big board camera. That's the sort of, we, they used to be like security cameras. They didn't have any of that nice sort of uh, cases or anything like that that we have today. They were these big massive cameras. I've put a bit of foam around the outside to protect mine and overall look, this was a CCD camera but imagine trying to fit this into some of today's builds. It's just not not going to happen whatsoever and the quality wasn't as good as what we have today either. Now I can't even remember which was the right way what was up and what was down let's hope hope that it goes that way now i guess out of everything on here the frame's probably the one part that would hold up the best over time and uh, what we have we've got detachable arms it could rock a six inch and as well as a five inch props but sort of one part we didn't like is at the time everybody was really loving these sort of pdb plates on the top but the problem was in a crash because this is all your current and stuff is running through here and it's a structural plate it would actually you could get some hairline fractures and that sort of thing that would cause sort of some shorts or some bad problems so we stopped using those pretty quickly in the hobby but you can see everything sort of sold up to here and i'm kind of a little bit embarrassed of my solder joints and those sorts of things remember this is like two or three years ago when uh when i was doing this now i've built a lot since now what we should do this this is sort of funny the funny part let's have a look at some of these motors on the outside this whole build this was only rated for 3s so uh that's kind of interesting if i can one of these is going to have to be loose here we go take this off the, the counterclockwise and clockwise direction threads what we've got here these are the props we all used to use these are some gem fan 50 40s and back in the day one thing people used to say was if you're going to get into drone racing buy a lot of props nowadays you buy about a tenth of the props because these things you just looked at anything and they would snap so the plastic that they used was absolutely terrible when you went really fast that start to deform and get raw and they'd make a really funny noise and a lot of the energy was put into noise but we didn't really have any options there was nothing like cyclones tri blades weren't even a thing you know i didn't know anyone who had some tri blade props so uh this was it this is what you ran most of the time now underneath here we've got an emax motor so emax has been around for a while this is a 2204 2300 kv it just had sort of standard flat magnets all that sort of stuff 
They weren't terrible, but they weren't incredible. They were only rated to 3S, uh, and you definitely couldn't have run a 4S on there or else things would start to smoke. Now, on the outside here, this is where we've got a 12 amp, and I think this is what's called Simon K. Before even B or Heli, we had a different sort of firmware we used to use in here. What I should do, let's cut this open so you guys can see what it sort of used to look like. Hang on one second. Alrighty, so I've taken the yellow sort of part off. I had number four on there because that's to remind me that this is motor four. Things were confusing back in the day. And what we have, look, there's no little three tabs on the outside of the ESCs like we have today. You have to solder into the middle of your ESC. You've got a nice big cap on here, and it also ran a five volt back out. So uh, what we had, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if I've taken it off or not, but you could plug some things in and power things from your ESC. So we used to actually have a five volt sort of regulator or back that would run current back out, which is, a, you know, something that's very different to today's standard. Now these, these ESCs, they were only rated for 3S and for 12 amps. So what you had to be careful of, if you were gonna put on some chunkier props, because look, bull nose props were starting to become a thing. If you were gonna put a bull nose prop on here, that would have drawn too many amps. And trust me, these things, they weren't very forgiving. I never blew mine up, but you didn't wanna push them like you can with today's ESCs. Today's ESCs, you can sort of get past it a little bit and you've got a little bit of play area. These ones, I knew a lot of people that fried some of these, but at the time, we didn't really have any other options. Now moving towards the middle, what we've got here, this is where things were, I guess I was sort of lucky. I had a naze, and I think this is a Rev 5 naze, but the Rev 6 came along after this. This is an F1 board, and I know a lot of people started out before me on the KK and stuff, but look, the naze is where it was at and where I sort of got flying. Look at all these stupid plugs too. You had all these sort of things everywhere so you could plug things in. We didn't really direct solder too much. I've sort of redone this one a little bit, but my first build, you had a whole bunch of pins sticking out the side and you used to plug your ESCs and stuff straight into the side of your little header pins that came out. So that part's a little bit crazy. This board couldn't really do much. There was no OSD or anything like that. And it took what was called, it was flying around with PPM at the moment, which was uh, before even SBUS, but it meant you could still send all your signals through one wire. There was a little bit of latency and stuff, but trust me, at the time, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Now the flight controllers as well, they didn't have beta flight, so these things had oscillations galore. Even on a great tune, before even clean flight, I think it was called, uh, not open pot, base flight. We had something called base flight, and that's what everyone used to fly around on, and uh, you know, it had oscillations, different PID controllers did different things, and you'd have to choose different menus. It was like, Nothing like you have it today. The flight characteristics, once you put beta flight on here, it was absolute heaven. The difference, of, but you don't understand how big of an influence what happened when beta flight came along. It was a total game changer because before that on base flight, everything had oscillations no matter what you sort of tried to do. Nothing flew like it did today. All right, I've taken the top off, check this thing out. I'll flash a picture on the screen because I can't really move it by the way it's soldered in, but this entire big blue bit underneath that's our OSD, and I think it was called the Minim OSD, if I'm not mistaken. And it was a total pain to set up. You had to pl program it in your computer through a different program with a different adapter, whole bunch of stuff. It was very, very confusing and difficult to get set up, or at least I thought so anyway. And I know a lot of people had issues with, and it was a little bit unreliable and sort of would come in and out, all that sort of stuff. Sometimes it was cursed, sometimes it would work. I know Trevor's used a lot of them in the past. But uh, yeah, and nowadays I am so grateful that our OSD is built into our flight controller, but check the size of it out. It's like even bigger than what we've got here. And on top of that, if you're trying to build this and your VTX, these VTXs, they didn't even fit underneath. So uh, you couldn't put them under your stack or anything like that. So VTXs, trying to build everything in here, was an absolute nightmare. So it is just crazy thinking how far they, they've come. And look, I used to have a PPM receiver flying around on my Tyrannus. It was called the D4R2, and that was a great receiver. I really, really liked that. But overall, it's just insane thinking what our quads used to be like to what they're like nowadays. Now, if we talk about the price, look, these things were a lot more expensive back in the day too. I think these frames were about 50 bucks for something like this, maybe $60. I know the original ones of these frames used to be like 100, but the frames are sort of the cheaper part when it came to it. The motors, they were about $30 each. These ESCs are about $25 each. Cameras used to be about 50 bucks. I paid, I think it was $70 for my first Naze flight controller. OSD was 30 bucks, and you were flying around on 3S. Props were about five bucks a packet, and they broke so much, so it is crazy thinking how much the price has dropped as well. That's something I'm very happy nowadays. You guys out there who are getting into the hobby, you don't have to sort of suffer through the, the costs and also, I guess, the troubleshooting experiences that sort of plague these earlier models. Alrighty, so there it is. I guess there's my Tech Tuesday look at two years ago, my first sort of quad builds, and 
how they used to go. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my Tech Tuesday, I guess, quick look. I wish I had some sepia effects, some olden day effect, but I don't know how to do that. My Tech Tuesday look at what gear used to be like when I first started flying. I was so proud of this build. It went so well, survived through so many crashes, and overall, it is just crazy to see sort of where our hobby has gone in such a short space of time. So if you're out there thinking, gee, my drone doesn't perform that well, don't fret too much because Look back to how this, I guarantee any of today's quads are going to far excel this 3S monster that's super heavy uh, and the props explode just by looking at them, you know, anything we've got out today is going to do a lot better than this. But, you know, at the same time, you don't need all the best gear to have fun. I still had an absolute blast and uh, this frame and that other one as well have a massive place in my heart. Anyway, that's it for Tech Tuesday. Next week we'll be back with definitely something a bit more up to date, definitely this year. Subscribe for more FPV related content and... As always, happy flying. Down in the comments too below, put down what was your first, I guess, FPV racer and when did you get into the hobby and how does it compare to today's stuff? Anyway, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.